Again, welcome, uh, future class of 2026. We are here tonight to talk to all of you about uh, the eighth grade course selection process, which we are in, we have started, and we're very excited to bring all of you into this process with us. So let me give you a little introduction uh, to the world of our high school. So we'll take a minute to view this quick, short video about our uh, two high schools, Jonathan Law and Warren High School. Hey, Zach. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I am going to turn this over to our school counselors to tell you a little bit more about the specific process. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I first wanted to just mention that the plan of studies, the program of studies is online at the Milford Public Schools, Milford Public Schools website. So be sure to check that out because it gives you descriptions of all the different classes that are available for your student. When your student does graduate, they will need a minimum of 25 credits. Nine of those credits will be in the humanities, including in the arts. Nine will be STEM credits, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Your student will have one credit in PE and wellness, one in world language, and one in a mastery-based diploma assessment. These credit re requirements are clearly articulated in the program of studies for your reference. As you can see, the table is broken down into different sections that include the various graduation requirements, such as humanities and STEM. So let's take a look at humanities. At least four of the nine credits in humanities will be in English. At least three of the nine credits in humanities will be in social studies. This includes a half credit in global history, a half credit in civics, and one credit in United States history. This leaves two humanity credits that can be fulfilled by student choice from the list of courses provided in the chart. Now let's take a look at the STEM requirements. Your student needs a total of nine STEM credits for graduation. At least three of the nine credits in STEM will be in science, including one credit in the living earth and one credit in chemistry and the earth system. At least four of the nine credits in STEM will be in math. All students must pass Algebra 1 in order to graduate. If your child passed Algebra 1 in middle school, that credit fulfills the Algebra 1 requirement, but does not count towards the four credits of math in order to graduate. This leaves two STEM credits that can be fulfilled by student choice from the list of courses provided in the chart. In terms of Development and wellness, students will have a one quarter class in both health and safety and PE and wellness each year. By their senior year, students will complete health and safety one through four. They will also take PE and wellness teams and two additional PE electives to satisfy these requirements. In order to fulfill graduation requirements, students will need one credit in world language. Any additional classes taken in world language will, be, will count towards humanities electives. But for planning purposes, I just wanted to mention that most two and four year colleges and universities like students to have a minimum of two or three years in a foreign language. The foreign languages that are 
that are taught at the high school level are Spanish, French, and Latin. You may be wondering, how do all these requirements play out over four years in high school? This chart articulates what it may look like over the course of your high school career. Please note it is not all inclusive. There will be opportunities for students to take courses in a wide range of electives, which we will discuss in just a bit. So students need to carry seven credits, but pass six and a half credits to earn that minimum 25 in order to graduate. Three of the classes will be 57 minutes in length with the fourth class being a longer block of 80 minutes in length. One credit course will meet four times in a six day cycle. Um, and then if a student selects less than eight credits, uh, he or she will be a study hall during the periods that they do not have a class. And I'm gonna give you a little bit more information on study halls. So studies, study halls are non-instructional periods where students can take advantage of an opportunity to work independently. Study halls run the same length of time as a regular class period. So they will either meet for 56 minutes or 78 minutes in length. And then students will have, will have built-in opportunities during common time, which run for 30 minutes once or twice in a six day cycle, as well as after school to work with their teachers for extra help and assistance. The choice to take a study hall should be made by parent and student and is dependent on the needs of the students in the full course of studies he or she is taking. All students must carry at least six and a half credits each year and with a maximum of eight, of eight credits. For your child to be considered a 10th grader, they must fulfill the following requirements by the end of their ninth grade, grade year. They must have a minimum of six and a half credits. They must have passed English one. They must have passed one year of mathematics and any additional promotion requirements will be outlined in the programs of study. Hello, eighth grade parents, how are you? I hope everybody is well. Um, what is in front of you is the daily bell schedule for the high school, and it looks pretty complicated, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it takes a little bit to get used to it. Um, I think that Christina did a really great job of describing some of the features of the schedule, and while I am not gonna go into detail about it, I want to assure you that your students are going to learn this in the first couple of weeks that they are at either Jonathan Law or at Foreign. Um, and pretty soon they're gonna know exactly where they need to be when they need to be there. For a few. We do have six days in our cycle. Um, the first four days, we have six classes. We, the students drop two courses each day. This is why students are able to enroll in eight total classes that they choose to. So in those A through D days, students meet for about 57 minutes per class. Um, and like you can see on the bottom, it says drop. And so um, each day, two are dropped. Then our E and F days are our block days. And students meet during that time for approximately, I think, 93 minutes. Um, and during that, it's a great time when science labs are happening, Socratic seminars are happening. So as Christina mentioned, we do have common time during that time. Um, and students have an opportunity at that point to either engage in advisory lessons or they have an opportunity to get extra help from other teachers or just to take a needed break if they need it. Um, so again, Again, um, you know, your students are going to learn the schedule. Um, it'll take a little bit, but they will learn it. And any questions that you do have or your student has about it, they can certainly speak to their school counselor or reach out to the high school. You can expect this timeline. This week, students will learn more about course selection as counselors push into classes. Next week, teachers will review their course recommendations with students. On March 18th, student class open. This is completed at home with parents. We ask that they are completed between Friday, March 18th to Tuesday, March 22nd. Students will meet with their school counselor to finalize course requests prior to the April vacation. Let's shift gears a little and talk about our elective course offerings, career pathways, and career cluster areas. I like to use the analogy that choosing electives is like opening a door. Some important things to remember are understanding the course requirements. There may be prerequisites to some courses, 
Some classes meet full year, some classes meet half year. Have students pursue interests. This is a wonderful opportunity for students to choose classes that are of interest to them. In addition, students may, may like to try something that is new to them. They, they may find themselves enjoying something they have never tried. Think about the career pathways and clusters that are further described in tonight's presentation and ask your student to share their novelty results. This was an inventory they completed in school to identify interests and assist them in the course selection process. Let's start by discussing our career pathways. We are proud to share that we have two CTE pathways, entrepreneurship and business management, as well as computer science. These pathways provide an opportunity for students to concentrate in that particular field of study through a sequence of courses which focus on developing a strong knowledge base and specific skills in that area. The pathway culminates with an independent learning experience referred to as a capstone project. We also offer a civic and global engagement certificate and the seal of biliteracy as well. If a student doesn't want to commit to something as intense as a career pathway, but wants to focus on a partic particular area of study, we have a variety of career clusters that students can choose from in the technology, engineering, and communication field, family and consumer sciences, business department, and health sciences. We wanted to highlight the wide variety of both the introductory and advanced courses we offer in both visual and musical arts. There are many choices for incoming ninth graders to choose from, so please be sure to know what all of your options are before you make any final decisions as a family. When you are planning, please keep in mind whether the class is a half a credit, which is a semester course, or one credit, which is a full year course. There are many options for your child to choose from. Examples include art, technology, engineering, and communication, family and consumer science, and business. In addition to choosing electives, please support your child in selecting alternates, as we will draw from these selections if a course doesn't fit in their schedule or doesn't run. Uh, this is a uh, this is an image of the course selection sheet that your students are receiving as they are engaging um, in these course selection lessons with counselors. So you should uh, see this sheet either coming home as a paper copy, uh, but it's also being shared out um, electronically as well. So this is something that is meant to just be a planning guide for our students um, and for you in support of them when you have these discussions. Uh, our students are having really informative conversations with teachers where the teachers are giving them recommendations. They're entering them into power school, uh, but this can help you think about course planning in terms of a four-year sequence. Not anything that you have to set in stone now, of course, but definitely something that can be helpful. So I'm sure a question that you have as parents and families is how to actually enter these course requests. Uh, so when you log into your, your student logs into their actual PowerSchool login, there's a, there will be a, an option on the side for them called course requests. And this video here actually shows us um, a view from years past that is similar to each year so once they're in the actual portion where they can make requests, they'll see that there are different categories listed here along the side. So the students will click on the different areas and it will bring up different options. You'll, they'll see that there are descriptions there as well as any prerequisites that are um, indicated. So it will be clear if there are options that are appropriate for them. Um, they're also going to notice that there will be recommendations listed for them that have been inputted by their teachers. And it's really important that our, that our students follow the recommendations of their teachers and enter, enter those as their requests. Um, and if there's a discrepancy, if you in conversation with your student have decided that they'd like to pursue a different level of challenge, that's something that you should discuss with, with your student's counselor as well as the administrator. Uh, because that would warrant some further discussion. Um, but it's really important to note that this system doesn't let you save your progress. So you have to have your course uh, selections ready to go with all six and a half credits because it won't actually let you um, enter less than six and a half credits because it will, it'll say that there's an error. 
So important to make sure that you've mapped, that your child has mapped out what, what courses they want to enter prior to, um, prior to actually putting them in so that they don't enter them and then lose their progress if they stop halfway through. And again, if you have any questions or your student has any questions about actually accessing this, feel free to contact the school and ask for some assistance. It's really important, and I'm sure um, the majority of you have done this since our students use their devices um, constantly, but if the AUP is not signed and your student does, doesn't have access to their account, they won't be able to make their course requests. So uh, that shouldn't be a problem for any of our students given that they use it on a daily basis, uh, but the requests do go through PowerSchool itself. So just wanted to make sure. Um, also being sent out to families, uh, you should, it, it was in the letter as a link, there's an instruction sheet that gives um, a print instructions of how to do these course, recourse, course requests as well. So it gives screenshots of all the different um, menus here and it'll take you through that. But it's pretty intuitive and your students should be able to navigate through that process. And again, when it becomes open, um, they'll see that option appear in their power school on the side, um, that it'll be course requests will be one of the options. So they'll have a chance to have that discussion with you at home and really make those thoughtful choices. Um, and important to remember that just because they're making these requests doesn't mean that this is actually their schedule. There's uh, many more steps that go on behind the scenes to building student schedules. And these are just, this is just the first part of that process. So the requests go in and it's important for the students, it'll ask them to request some alternates too. Um, and the reason we ask them to request alternates is so that in building the schedule, in case their first choice electives are not available, they might get their third or fourth in terms of what they listed as an alternate. Um, it doesn't work if they request the same courses uh, for both their elective requests and their alternate requests because sometimes they might end up with a combination of the two and then they end up double scheduled. So please don't have your student request the same courses twice because uh, that doesn't work in the system. Um, and you'll see that there are, there are options. There are many things that are open to our ninth graders. And um, I'm seeing some great questions that I can't wait for us to be able to address in a little bit um, around options to double up in certain subjects and things like that. And as they advance through, um, through each year, there will be more options like that. Uh, but the, the program for our ninth graders is, is pretty set in terms of the required courses that they would, um, that they would go through. So, but that's the overview of how to make course requests. And again, if you have any specific questions or, or encounter any access problems on the day that that becomes open, um, then I would definitely reach out to the school for that piece. It's really, but as I said, really important to focus on making sure that you are having conversations at home because uh, starting this past week, we've been having conversations with students in their classrooms about the process so that they're familiar with how this is going to work and what that timeline looks like, but also making sure that at home you're planning as a family. Um, a big part of building a high school schedule for any year is that we want to make sure that our students have um, balance. We want to make sure that it's a it's an appropriate all around program and that they're going to have a very successful year. So you want to think about the big picture and think about that four year trajectory, knowing, though, that it doesn't have to be set in stone and that there are many options that can be pursued for students. Um, and the conferencing aspect with teachers is an incredibly important part of this process. So all through next week, our teachers our middle school eighth grade teachers will be talking with your students about their recommendations. So you'll actually see the recommendations when you log in with your student to the PowerSchool uh, request portal. But, but even prior to that, the teacher will have reached out to your child to have that conversation about what they feel is best for next year and also the rationale of why. Um, and then I think there's that great opportunity that if there's a family concern in terms of level of challenge or in terms of the overall picture of your child's projected schedule for next year, that it gives you that opportunity to engage in that dialogue with the teacher, the school counselor, and eventually the administrator to have that approval if, um, if the level that you're seeking for your child's schedule is different than what the teacher um, was looking at. Uh, so, and in that case, to make sure you reach out if you have questions, if you have concerns, um, we are really excited that for the second year, our program of studies is online. 
and it's accessible. So it's not a matter of they can't find it, they lost it, or that the book isn't available. Um, and the other piece that students will be engaging in is that there will be, they will, all of our students will be given access to a virtual elective fair from the high schools. So during their ASA period um, in the upcoming weeks, they will also get a chance to take a peek through a website that's been designed for them to actually take a peek at some information about all the different electives. And in the past, this has been something that has been offered in person and it's been a really wonderful event. Um, and unfortunately, we're just at, with, at the time that this planning began, we weren't at that point. We are really hopeful that we'll be able to offer and that we will be offering some in-person events for our eighth graders with our high schools in the spring. Uh, so as, as that's quickly coming around, know that behind the scenes, we're definitely planning those opportunities and can't wait to share them with everyone. Just waiting for some of those details though to become finalized um, because we think it's really important that the students actually are able to interact with current students and see the school itself and really become excited about next year. So we're happy for that. Um, but uh, by the time the portal opens for students to make those uh, to make their course requests, all teachers, our expectation is that our teachers will have all put their course recommendations in. So again, when this actually uh, opens, and I believe, I want to make sure I don't misquote the date, but I believe the, uh, we're having the portal open for requests on the 18th. Is that correct? Uh, so when that opens, uh, the expectation is that all of the teachers would have made a recommendation. The content area teachers would have made a recommendation for next year. Uh, so we're really excited because this is the this is the fun time where we begin to really think about what's going to happen for next year. Um, and as I introduced them before, and I know you already heard from uh, Ms. Dunnick, we're really excited that our our two high school counseling department heads are here for questions that I see you guys have been asking in the chat. Um, so let me turn this over to them. Uh, and we indicated some of the typical frequently asked questions that uh, that we often get. And I know that they were going to talk through some of those points and then also address some of the questions that you guys have raised in the chat. So I'll turn this over to Mr. Rosengrant and Ms. Dunnick. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, we've in the chat, we've been answering some of the questions that have come in and they've been some great questions. Um, you know, things like is my if my student is going to ECA or aqua, um, you know, do, do they still have the same graduation requirements and Mr. Rosengrant answered that and said yes. Um, and, you know, there's been some other questions about um, you know, when will, I, I think the most recent one was when will um, requests be logged, all logged into PowerSchool. And um, ladies, is there a deadline for when the eighth graders need to have that logged in before you start having your meetings with them? March 22nd, all course selections need to be entered. And then we start our conversations with students on the 23rd. Great. Great. Um, so Jake, do you wanna go over kind of some of the, the common stuff like that that's on the fact sheet? Sure, and I, there was a, a, a question about uh, Gradebook being an interactive digital tool. And I, I think or, or that might be referring to uh, PowerSchool and that's where uh, students and parents enter their, their course selections. Um, so yes, I think if that's the answer uh, to another question. And if not, please just kind of type in the, the chat a more uh, direct question than that we could probably answer. Um, but some of the questions that, that are up here about what if my child changes their mind, um, that is okay. Um, if school is still in session, if you guys are kind of thinking about it after the, the courses are, are submitted, just reach out to your counselor and let them know. Um, and they'll be able to either change that in power school or reach out to Ms. Dudek or myself. And, and we can also do that in power school as well. Um, but we ask that, um, you know, there, the school, based on these requests, the master schedule is being built for each school. Um, and so the later it gets, um, it might not make a difference in requests and what courses are. It just would be, you know, if that class is running, we'll make sure that, it, that uh, our school knows to add that to their schedule as best as possible. 
um, for extracurricular activities and sports. Um, I know both high schools have active clubs. I think we're, you know, somewhere in the 30 to 40, um, you know, every, every year. And the cool thing about clubs is they can change from year to year. You know, if there's a, an interest that your student has and we don't have a club available or running already, or maybe one has run in the past and isn't currently running, uh, it's really easy to, um, to get one started. Uh, come see your counselor um, and we'll explain the whole process. But basically, if you have a, a bunch of people, some friends that are interested in the same activity or event, uh, and you have an adult in the building that can be an advisor, you can start a club. Um, so if there isn't anything that you're seeing that's in of interest to their student, uh, we, can, we can see what we can do to make it happen. And then sports happen, obviously, fall, winter, and spring. Um, and the cool thing about school the high school sports is you don't need to have any kind of experience. If you want to try something new, um, head up to one of those athletic meetings, talk with the coaches um, and, and go for it. Uh, there's no reason to, you can't play something you haven't played all your life. Um, after school ends, uh, school counselors have the lovely task of hanging out uh, for five extra days after everybody's gone. So if you do have some questions within that little five period, five day period, um, you can definitely reach out to us and we can get back to you. Uh, we'll be doing things like working on schedules, um, working on things for the end of the year and upcoming in the new year. Um, and then during the summer, there are a few people still remaining in the schools. Uh, school counselors come back five days prior to uh, the start of the year as well. So we'll be there early as well. Um, some of the questions that have been asked in here, I just want to, in case people, you know, are on iPhones and they're not able to see the chat, some of the questions have been, you know, will students be meeting one-on-one -on -one with their school counselor at the middle school about their choices? Yes, that will be happening um, in about the, the weeks after following when all the requests have to be put in. Um, there was a question about UConn ECE courses. Both high schools offer UConn ECE courses. Um, and um, so there are lots of options for both UConn ECE and AP classes. Um, there was also a question about where do I see a teacher's recommendations? In that video that Dr. Galeski showed you, um, when you do get onto the course registration page and you click on that little pencil icon box, a box will pop up inside of it and it will show the options for the student. So say it's English. The box will pop up and you will see English one level one, English one, one level two, English one level three. Um, and you will see next to it, a couple boxes over, there will be some things that may say prerequisites. Um, it'll say school year. And then you'll see a box and in it, You'll know what it is because you'll see in the last box, it will say um, recommended by, and then the student's teacher's name. And so you're gonna know it's in bold um, and you're, you're gonna know immediately which class it is that your child has been recommended for. Also to jump in, I see a question. I don't know if it was addressed yet. Um, are they picking classes now for full freshman year or just the first semester? Uh, and it's full of full, full year. Um, so they will be obviously there their core courses, their maths, their science, um, those will be year long courses or full credit courses. Most of our electives uh, are half year semester long classes, but they are picking their courses uh, for the entire year. And then about this time next year, they'll be doing the same thing for the following year. So um, we're picking classes once for the entire year. Uh, there was also a question that was answered in the chat, but in case you can't see the chat, uh, yes, if your student is taking algebra currently in middle school and they're passing it, uh, their math teacher will then recommend them for the next course in the sequence, which is geometry. Um, I, there, there's a whole slew of things that play into recommendations for the next year, um, but grades do play into that. Um, certainly uh, teachers are going to look at um, a variety of things. They may look at grades, they may look at test scores. Um, uh, and so in those conversations with the students, they will be able to kind of decipher what is going to be the best option for the student. Uh, I, there's a question about course selections being input before the student gets the one-on-one -on -one with their counselor. Um, so a lot of it is really about time. So meeting with their counselor, 
they're going to have those courses selected. And then that time with their counselor is going to be really talking about those options, those choices. Um, if those elect, uh, electives, like which ones make sense, maybe talk to them about possible things they want to do or their interests. Um, so if the counselors are spending that time doing the, the inputting of the, of the courses, then it takes away from those in-depth conversations they can be having about maybe looking at the different levels, because just because you're recommended for a specific level doesn't mean you have to be in that level. And it's just about balancing your schedule. Maybe your strengths are in that STEM course area and you want to challenge yourself in there and take some level one courses, but English and social studies maybe aren't your thing. And you can balance your schedule by taking some level two uh, college prep courses there. So it's all about having those meaningful conversations. And if we're putting the classes in as opposed to having those conversations, it, it doesn't make those, uh, those meetings as, uh, as meaningful, I guess, is, is what I was looking for. So yes, that's the reason why we have the courses input prior to the one-on-one -on -one meetings. And expanding um, on what Jake just said, because it'll answer a question that was in the chat, do we have to go with the classes that are recommended? Um, we ask that you put in the classes that are recommended. Um, and the reason for that is for a variety of the reasons that we just talked about. Um, but that being said, in the meetings, you know, if um, you as a family and your student is feeling strongly um, that, say, I was recommended for level two English and I really think that I can do level one, there is a process that um, you can go through to take to try to override the um, teacher recommendation. And so if that is the case, I encourage you to reach out to your child's school counselors so that you can discuss that process with them. <clears throat> looking at a, a question, are elective courses first come first serve? Um, and so essentially what happens with power school and course requests is once the master schedules are built at each, at each school, power school then runs um, all of the students that are in power school and place them in specific sections of courses and they start with graduation requirements first. So all students will have like their English and their math classes you know, kind of put into their schedule first, and then it kind of looks through what electives they've chosen, and if they fit into the schedule, um, say, in a, in a certain period that's already open, because the uh, core courses are, graduation courses are there, uh, it fits it into the schedule. Um, so there are times where, as counselors, we're coming in, working with the schedule, because after the core courses are in, the electives that were chosen don't fit either because they run at the same time as an English course um, and power school elected to put English in that period over the elective. Um, sometimes it's as simple as moving the English class um, and, and adding the elective. And sometimes it's, that's the only section that that's running. And so um, it's not necessarily a first come first serve basis. It's just how power school runs the algorithm that it runs and how it comes in. So there are times where a section might be full. It might be the only section that your student might be able to fit into, but it just didn't get into their, through power school. And that's why it's important to have those alternative courses, those alternative electives, um, and having some thought into those alternative electives, because it's possible that your student can be in those courses instead of their first or second choice. I would add though that um, I know this all sounds incredibly complicated, and the great news is that's why all of us are here. We're here to support you and your student in, through this process and to make it not complicated, to um, you know, really guide them through making the course selections. And that really starts with those important conversations next week that'll be happening with the teachers. So the teachers will start uh, talking with the students about what class in their particular area they're recommending for next year. And that's really where this will, where this will go from there. Um, and so again, the reason why we have all of us in our roles is to support all of you in, in this planning. So it's not something to become overly stressed about. It's something that um, we are here to help guide through the process. And there's, you know, there's, there's some wonderful questions being asked over in the chat right now. Um, and just the one I wanted to speak to before I turn it back to Jake and Jen is the part about, you know, to remember that our students have the opportunity to earn um, 32 credits by the time they graduate. So uh, there's a tremendous opportunity. There's room for study halls. There's room for lots of activities and balance. 
Um, so uh, freshman year is just the beginning of this whole process. One of the, the questions um, asked about the survey that the students do, and I want to say, as with all things, nothing is a perfect science. Um, you know, if I took that survey, I'm sure things would pop up that it would say that I, that would recommend it for me, but it's not something I particularly have an interest in and that's okay. Um, what I think is most important, and I think it's probably a similar message that all the counselors share is one of the most important things as you are moving through your high school years. And as you are trying different classes, one of the, you're learning two important things. First important thing is what do you like? And the second important thing is what don't you like? It is just as important to figure out what don't you like as it is to figure out what you like. Because as you are moving towards, you know, junior and senior year and having the conversations about the rest of your life, um, those are all going to be things that we're going to be talking about. And so if, you know, the, the survey came out and it's not really something that your child's interested in, that's okay. Have the child take some classes that they are interested in, courses that they want to explore. That is the most important thing see a question about signing up for a football and a half year study hall. And if your study doesn't match up with football season. So that it's something that um, if when you get your schedule uh, in mid August and you see that the study hall that you asked for isn't in that fall se season, reach out to your counselor. There might be something that um, we can do or a choice that you have to make. It might be that the elective that you're in that semester, that fall semester doesn't run in the spring and you just have to make the choice of, is it more important that I have that study in the fall or is it more important that I'm taking that elective class that I, that I chose? Um, so it's just a matter of uh, how it works out, but it, it's possible that we could switch it over to the spring, um, just not a definite. Um, we, we briefly went over taking study halls. I think that that's a, you know, a personal decision on the student and the family's choice of whether or not they feel that a study hall um, will benefit their student. I will say that um, we hear a lot from students that a study hall is beneficial to them just because as they are shifting from expectations um, and rigor from middle school to high school, that sometimes it can be a little bit, um, it can have an impact on students. And so we just wanna make sure that um, they have all the opportunities in order to get the assistance that they need in order to be as successful as possible. Um, and the freshman study halls are a little bit different than our other study halls. They um, are quiet study halls in that um, it is really a time for students to be in a smaller setting with a teacher, um, quiet, working on material, getting assistance if they need it. So um, it really is um, up to the student and the family what they feel will be best um, for their student in high school. There seems to be a question about sports, specifically swimming. Um, each sport is going to meet, you know, differently. Uh, so it's really up to the coaches. Uh, swimming, I can't remember if uh, boys swimming and girls swimming are the different seasons, but um, all of the coaches at each high schools are listed on the athletics page on the website um, with their contact information. Um, and I think there's, uh, at least on forums, I know there's like a, kind of an intro video for each sport that kind of introduces the coach and gives a little bit of information. I think they explain when each season starts and when off season things start. Um, but if there is a, a specific question to each or for each individual school, I'm sure if you reach out to myself or, or Jen, we could definitely help you find out information for you. I also encourage you to reach out to the athletic directors at either school because they are a wealth of knowledge and they will have all kinds of information for you in regards to any of the sport programs. Questions about study halls being made last period. Um, that that truly depends on um, your other classes. Um, it is, um, it's. I, I think Jake might have said it. You know, it's one big algorithm creating the master schedule, and what it is doing it is it is creating a schedule that is going to be most beneficial to the most students in the building. Um, and so we can't guarantee when study halls can be. Um, you know, for your child, it will be dependent on the courses that they've requested and how that fits in in that whole matrix. Um, but certainly a conversation to have when the schedules do come out um, right before the beginning of the school year to reach out to the school counselor and see if it is a possibility. Um, I encourage that. 
uh, yes, your freshman, uh, your school counselor, which the school counselor you have freshman year should, is going to be the school counselor that you have throughout your, your tenure in high school. Um, and what we do is we, we look at, it is alphabetically, um, by last name. And what we do is we, we look at the number of kids that are coming in each school, divide that kind of evenly amongst the five school counselors. Um, and then we figure out how that falls in. Um, if you look at each of the high school's websites now, um, and kind of get an idea of where the alphabet is falling, you can kind of get a, 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 a a roundabout answer of who your school counselor is, but don't don't kind of uh, go definitive on that. Uh, just kind of give you an idea of where we are in the middle um, for course load case loads. Um, but it will be determined uh, probably by the end of the year. I don't know if it'll be communicated with you until you get your schedule in the in the uh, summer, though. Uh, Dr. Gillespie, I'm not sure if you if we give that information out beforehand or if it's just they find out when we do give out their schedules that's usually determined when we give out schedules given that um it's something that is often a summer decision uh that those determinations because it's based heavily on enrollment numbers uh so we like to make sure um it's as accurate as possible so that being said if you do have a question um you know, if you are a law student um, or, or you're going to be going to law in the fall and you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to field any questions for um, any students who are going to be attending law. Um, that way you're not trying to kind of figure out and guess who you might ask. You can always certainly um, reach out to me first um, and I'll be able to get you whatever information you need. And I would, I would add too, and I'm sure Mr. Rosengrant was about to say this, that I know that if you reach out with any of your questions to your current school counselors, they are very happy to forward them on to your um, high school for next year, to the counseling department there. So don't stress about who do I email. Um, email your go-to person right now. And uh, we all work very closely together to make sure that we get, um, we get you the information that you need. So if it's if it's an athletics question, we reach out to the coaches and the athletic director. Um, and if it's a question about, you know, we, we make sure we find you the right person. So feel free to reach out to either of the high school counsel counseling department heads or your current middle school counselor. Because um, no matter who you ask, we'll make sure you get the information. Seeing the questions about um, being selected for athletic teams and the selection process timeline, it's all based, it's uh, individualized by sport. So again, that that would be a question for each of the uh, ADs um, or the coaches that are listed on the websites. And if someone can't see the chat, there was a uh, question about the career key surveys or the results of the career assessments. They are located in your Naviance, your students' Naviance accounts. We will make sure, um, I'll reach out to our athletic directors and make sure that they have a planned communication for all of our eighth grade families. Um, again, with things becoming much more open for us, it would be great to, uh, to see what opportunities we'll have coming up for information sharing, uh, but we'll make sure that we uh, provide as many opportunities as possible for the upcoming, you know, our rising eighth graders here to learn about the, the sports teams as well as the process. Um, and we'll make sure that that's happening soon and that information is shared with you. Um, I see a question about what is Naviance, and Naviance is a, uh, is a tool that we use in our middle schools and high schools, um, and it's a, uh, the, the students have been engaging in a number of career interest inventories, as well as um, there's a variety of tools that can be used in there, and as they become high school students, it helps uh, shape their college uh, exploration process as well, so uh, that is something that, that will be used further as they move into the high schools. Um, let's see, if a student attending aquaculture school, um, will they still select courses the same way? Yes, it's a little trickier if you're in a specialized program uh, because power school will require that you select six and a half credits. Um, so it'll just be something that needs to be tweaked by your school counselor when they meet for that uh, when they need to review the credits. So um, 
it is a, it is a little bit tricky because it does require that you enter six and a half credits, even if you're in a specialized program. Uh, so um, we'll, we'll make sure we fix that on, on the back end for any of those students. Uh, question was asked about band. Yes, band does uh, earn a credit for every year that the student is in a band um, or in the band for that matter. Um, they also count band counts towards humanities electives. Um, so if your student is in the band and does it all four years, they have nothing to worry about for their humanities elective credits for graduation. <laughs> um, next question about leveling systems one through three remain in place for sophomore year. Yeah, so our class levels, uh, level one, level two, level three, AP, um, that's for all of our classes throughout, um, throughout their time here in high school. But it's important to remember that your child's placement in a different level uh, does, you know, in, the, in a particular level does not have to remain constant all throughout four years. Uh, there's a, a great possibility for movement and it's really about creating balance. Like we said, we want an appropriate level of challenge for every student um, and that's gonna be different and it might change. And we hope that there's just tremendous growth over time. So just because you, you know, it's very possible to move between levels uh, usually in an upward trajectory to increase challenge. Um, and we really work to increase their capacity as well so that by the time they're seniors, they're ready to go on to college and really take on those challenges. Uh, so it doesn't mean that if, uh, you know, that it's a, it's a track for four years that our students stay in because uh, there's definitely great possibilities for movement. And I think that goes along with the question that just came in. Um, the recommendation from the teachers will indicate a level uh, which is meant to help guide the selection process. Uh, but again, we've talked about how if, um, if, you know, if you have a different perception as a family, thinking that either you think your child requires more challenge or that this, or that overall, this might be too much for your student to take on, um, those are conversations to have with the school counselor. And that's most particularly why the meeting with the school counselor takes place after all the teacher meetings, uh, because the school counselor has that more um, aerial view, if we said, of your student's program and knows your student. And it's, um, it's, we found that it really is the most beneficial time after teachers have made recommendations, after you all have had your family conversations for the counselor to take a look at it and, and then move forward and really finalize those requests and then circle back with you around any of the, any of the things that you've raised. Um, so it's a great connection point right there as well. So I, the question is, is enrichment still offered in high school? And I think the, the point to that is we, we just have the challenging and the rigorous and course load, right? So if level one um, honors classes, and then we go into advanced placement and the, the EC, which are college courses. Um, so that's a conversation that's pretty specialized and individualized by student. And so if you have any questions with are these classes or are the rigor of these classes appropriate for my student to have with that, that high school counselor or the middle school counselor now have a plan in place so that the classes are challenging um, and rigorous and appropriate for your child. But specifically in like Richmond where they'll get, um, you know, pulled into small groups and do that kind of thing is that doesn't happen at the high school level. It's just a matter of making sure the courses are, are appropriate um, for them and, and where they're at at their level. So some important things to think about um, as we close out for tonight, uh, in terms of the timeline and the dates, the, uh, so this week, uh, school counselors are pushing in and doing those initial lessons with students. Um, and the information is very similar to the information that we're sharing with all of you tonight. Uh, so that will be happening throughout this week. Um, next week is when teachers will be having those conversations with students. Uh, the teachers are behind the scenes right now working on their recommendations and making sure that everything is set. So next week, uh, again, your, your student will be having conversations with their teacher and uh, they will also at some point next week view the elective fair. Uh, the great part is when those elective fairs are um, shared with our students, that will come home to you as well to be able to view with them at home as a link. So when uh, at some point next week, you should see that and it'll definitely be sent out um, by Friday. So by next Friday. So you'll be able to take a peek at the elective offerings. Um, both schools provided some videos, uh, depending upon which school your child will be, at, will be attending next year. 
And then at the end of next week on Friday after school, the, um, the option to enter course requests on the student end, the student and parent end will be opened. Um, again, it won't be open until after school. So that'll happen uh, right, you know, right around three o'clock. That'll be activated and it will be open uh, through the middle of the next week so that you guys have time as a family to really review everything. Um, and then after that, that's when counselors will start meeting with the students one-on-one -on -one to verify all the requests, make sure they chose everything they were supposed to choose and that they've uh, covered all the bases. Um, so really the first steps that you guys can take as a family would be to take a peek at the online program of studies take a look through it, um, become familiarized if you have the time, or at least have your student do that so that they understand what the things are that their teachers are gonna talk to them about next week so that they have that, um, that familiarity there. Uh, and again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out to your school counselor, um, reach out to the high school counselors. We're all here to support you in this process and if there's a ton of information. Um, so we are, definitely working towards that. Um, and I see the last question, high school guidance counselors actively engaged. Um, it's a combination of both. Uh, our school counselors meet with our students regularly to ensure that they are programming, that you know the programming is appropriate and that that it's towards post high school planning. Um, but it's a it's a there's two sides to the conversation. Um, so it's something that at home should be a continual conversation as well as something that at school we are always focusing um, you know the, the the work there. So uh, the course selection date again. So you won't be able to enter any requests until next Friday, and you'll receive an email letting you know that it's open. It'll it'll contain the instruction sheet so that you, in case you um, don't remember how to do it, uh, no problem. It will all be indicated for you. So look out for more communications next week. You will get instructions, dates. Um, we like to make it very simple. So uh, next week, te teachers will be having conversations with students, and then we'll send you guys an email when it's time to hop on the computer with your child and enter some um, selections. And then we will be going from there. Uh, but uh, it is, has been such a pleasure to have all of you online with us tonight. And uh, again, remember to check out the online program of studies. It's available on the Milford Public Schools website. Um, and uh, we'll make sure that it's also linked in the communications you receive next week. Uh, but it is available on the MPS website. Uh, and I see that it was just linked in here for you if anyone wants to grab it before we go from the chat. Uh, but again, thank you so much. And it was such a pleasure seeing all of you. And we can't wait for your students to make their selection so that they're one step closer to being in high school. Uh, so everyone have a great night. Um, and we will talk to all of you soon.